Hello, my name is Kim Lewis and I'm a radiographer at Taranaki Base Hospital in New Plymouth, New Zealand. Today I'm recording for you um, what potentially could be a new method for doing axial shoulders. So uh, very tongue in cheek, I'm calling this the Lewis method. I uh, presented this talk at the study day for, um, held by the NZIMRT Central Districts on Saturday the 14th of August. And because people had asked for the recording, I thought I will re-record it for you and present it to you here today. So unfogging the axial shoulder. So a uh, couple of quick things that we'll go over. So we'll have a look at the reason why we do the axial shoulder, a bit of the anatomy. Why do we find it so hard to position? What it looks like when it's correct? How to correct the positioning and a few images to look at. Uh, just a note, we've got a bit of a storm raging outside. So if you hear a lot of wind and rain, I apologize. It is the weather, which is pretty ghastly here today. So the purpose of the axial view is to demonstrate the anterior to posterior relationship of the glenoid and the humeral head. This is achieved by getting the glenoid superimposed itself, so the superior and inferior aspects superimposed on itself with minimal superimposition of the humeral head. So some quick anatomy of the axial view. We've got the clavicle, which comes through here, the acromion, which is at the back, the glenoid, that little one there, the coracoid coming through there. So why do we find it so hard to position? Well, I spoke with a few radiographers in order to put this talk together. And when you look at all the textbooks, all the textbooks have the Lawrence method. So patients are laying supine on the table with a cassette at the top of the shoulder and the central ram coming up through, um, through the axillary area. But how do we actually do um, our axial shoulders? So at the study day on Saturday, I surveyed the room and I asked them, how do we actually do it? Unanimously, every single one said, we do it with our patient like this. So there's a lot of variables in order to get the axial shoulder correct. Some angle the central ray towards the patient, some angle away from the patient, some do the image with a vertical central ray. And of course, you've got a patient variable as well with how far over the cassette are the patient able to lean. Patients with a lot of pain aren't able to lean very far, whereas younger, more athletic might be able to lean a bit further. And you can see how this affects our central ray. With our textbooks, we're coming up this way through the axillary area, aiming at around 30 degrees. But what we are trying to do is get this line here so that it's perpendicular to our IR. So I was looking at this and thinking, how can we remove some variables? Is there a way that we can keep a vertical central ray and angle the patient? And when I was looking at the um, anatomy, specifically, I was taking this image, which I've got from McQuillan's, and I was rotating it around um, for my presentation. And I noticed when you've rotated it so that this line is, uh, is perpendicular, you get this horizontal line made up of the AC joint and the superior angle of the scapula. And I'm going to call this line the superior scapular line. Now you can see that that means that the central ray is therefore perpendicular perpendicular to the IR and also perpendicular to the superior scapular line. So you could also look at rotating the patient a bit more. So you could look perhaps at having the clavicle horizontal, which would mean you would angle your central ray away from the patient, or you can tilt everything over a bit more and head towards the patient. But basically it comes back to the superior scapular line. So in this image here that I took with one of my lovely students, you can see she's tilted quite far over. And if you drew an imaginary line through the AC joint and the superior angle of the scapula, you would see that she's actually on a tilt of around about sort of five degrees or so. So you would want to um, alter your exposure, uh, your angle of your central ray to accommodate that. So when you've got an appropriately positioned image, what you want is you want the base of the coracoid so that it's not superimposed over the glenoid cavity, and that will then allow the humeral head to be free. So on this one, for example, the base of the coracoid comes lateral to the glenoid cavity, which means that the patient is sitting too far over and you want them to sit upright more. With this one here, you can see the base of the coracoid is too medial 
The glenoid is not over, which means the patient is sitting too upright and you want to lean them over. So in conclusion, what did we find? That it was very, very difficult to judge the angles and that the easiest way that we found to get things right was to feel for the superior scapular line. So the AC joint, the superior angle of the clavicle, the imagine a horizontal line there and angle your central ray to that. So I've tried that on a patient. Unfortunately, before I presented this talk, I only had a chance to, uh, to attempt it on one patient. But when I did that, I'm going perpendicular to the superior scapular line. This is the image that I got. So you can see here, the glenoid is almost perfectly superimposed on itself. The base of the coracoid is just touching onto the glenoid there and the humeral head is free of superimposition. So as a result of this image, um, I have asked the staff in our department if they could perhaps try this themselves. We have not yet had a chance as this was only on Friday, but we are going to be trying this in the future to see if this method using the AC joint, the superior angle of the scapula, imagining a line between them and just angling our tube so that it's perpendicular to that line, will make it easier. Now, the great thing about using the superior scapular line is it doesn't matter the position on the patient. If the patient is able to lean over quite a bit, you're gonna end up with a central ray that is coming in towards the patient's body. If you've got a patient that is more upright, who is unable to tilt over, you can see that that central line is almost vertical, then you're gonna end up with a vertical central ray. Now that will obviously have implications for getting your image on the cassette, obviously. So you're gonna, of course, try and encourage them to move over a little bit if you can. So finally, I've got a few pictures just to see how to correct it if it's wrong, because that's also the other thing that we um, struggle with. So on this here, the base of the coracoid is not super, uh, is, sorry, the glenoid is not superimposed. It is a little bit superimposed over the head of humerus. And the base of the coracoid is coming in over the glenoid. So you can see that the patient is tilted too far over. So you want to sit them up a bit more. Whoops. And this one here, the base, again, the glenoid's not superimposed. And the base of the coracoid is medial. So you want to add a little bit um, of central ray away from the patient in order to get through that. Um, or tip the patient over. Once more, base, the, um, the glenoid is not superimposed and the uh, base of the coracoid is coming lateral to the glenoid, which means that the patient is tilted over too much. And same thing. So overwhelmingly, when I looked through axial shoulders, I found in general, the patient was actually tilted too far over. So a summary as far as correcting position is if the base of the coracoid overlies or is lateral to the glenoid cavity, the patient is tilted too far over, either sit them up more or angle your central ray in towards the their patient's body. And if the base of the coracoid is medial to the glenoid cavity, the patient is sitting up too much and you wanna lean the, either lean them over, so again, get that superior scapular line horizontal or angle the central ray away from the patient. Now, a fun little um, final note, I'm curious, put your comment, I'm gonna put this on YouTube, so put the comments below, I wanna see what everyone does. How do you orientate or how do you hang your um, axial shoulders? Is it B, patient supine with the, this is a left one, so the, their uh, humerus goes out to the, the left side of the patient. Do you do it B, C or D? Or finally, this one's a bit of a curly one. Do you do it E? Um, we've had a funny conversation with some people in our department who hang it this way, which um, I think is a very old way, I believe. Uh, but let me know the, if you know the reason why some people orientate their shoulders like this. It would be, I'd love to know it. It's really interesting. Personally, I do it A. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Please share this video. I would like people to see it. Um, have a go with it. Let me know. Um, either put it in the comments below or you can put it, to, uh, send me an email on my email address. I'll put that in the description on YouTube or you can tweet me on Twitter. Um, Avid Keo is my Twitter. Um, I would love for people to try this, see if this uh, superior scapular angle, um, sorry, line works and tell me what you think of the Lewis method. Thank you.